Let me show you how to create the magical Doctor Strange shield in Photoshop. In the comics and movies, including Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange uses a spell to summon the Shield of Seraphim. But in this video, we will use only Photoshop to create the shield, which is equally as magical in my opinion. The link to the tutorial assets is in the description. Let's start by designing the shield. Go into the File menu and select New, and create a document that is 1080 by 1080, and set the background to black, then press Create. Next, press Control r on Windows, Command r on the Mac to enable the rulers. Make sure that under the View menu, Snap is enabled, and you can click and drag a horizontal guide that will snap to the center, and do the same thing for the vertical guide. Then, select the Ellipse tool, and from the Options bar, select Shape. You can disable the fill by clicking on this icon, and open the stroke and set it to white and set the width to six pixels. Let's start by creating the main shape of the shield. Hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click and drag from the center. Then continue designing your shield by repeating this process. To make a more interesting design and create the illusion of depth, make sure that your shapes have different stroke widths. From the Properties panel, you can change the stroke to eight pixels. Next, select the Rectangle tool and create a rectangle from the center of the shield. Again, hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac to create a shape from the center. Commit the changes when you're done, and you can duplicate a layer by pressing Ctrl-J, and then you can press Ctrl-T to transform, and you can rotate the layer. Next, take a few moments to continue with this process. Make any design that you like using these simple shapes. This is the design I came up with. I also place the different sections into groups to stay organized. The next step is to select the ellipse tool, then make sure that path is selected from the dropdown and click and drag from the center while holding the alt key and the shift key to create a perfect circle from the center. And right about here, release so that you have just a path. Then go into the horizontal type tool, set Arial Regular as your font, and click on the path, and Photoshop will place dummy text around the path. Next, we need to make the text feel older and more mystical. My solution was to open Google Translate, set the language to Gujarati, and input my name and YouTube channel. Then I can just copy the result, go back into Photoshop, and paste it over the dummy text. I'll paste it a few more times to cover the entire circle. Next, from the Properties panel, you can click on this icon to reveal more options, and you can increase your font size. In this case, about 41 points should work. Next, I'll increase the vertical scale, so I'm just gonna scale this up just so that it fills in more of that shield, and that is looking very, very good. You can now repeat this step a few more times until you get something that looks like this. The shield is looking great, but the edges are too sharp. Let me show you how to roughen the edges by using layer mask and a filter. First, press Control, Alt, and the number two on Windows. That's Command, Option, and the number two on the Mac to select the bright pixels in the image. Since the background is black, the only thing selected will be the shield. By the way, I placed the layers that make up the shield into a group. I can now click on the layer mask icon to create a mask on the group based on the selection. There is no visual change, but the design is now confined to the layer mask. We can now go into Filter, Pixelate, and choose Crystallize. Then you can decrease the cell size all the way to three. That's the lowest value that you can input and press OK. And I'll zoom in so that you can see the result. Photoshop has gone ahead and roughened those edges up. I can apply that filter one more time by going into Filter. And while holding the Alt key on Windows, that's the Option key in the Mac, I can select the first option, which is the last filter that we applied. And Photoshop will bring up the Crystallize window once again. Without holding the Alt or Option key, Photoshop will just apply the filter using the previous settings. What you want to do now is drag the cell size slider to about 16 and press OK. Then go into Edit and we can fade the last command so I can just reduce the opacity. Just to get more variance in the design, this looks great and I'll press OK. Next, I'll right click and convert the group into a smart object. A smart object is a container that can hold one or more layers, and it allows you to apply non-destructive adjustments, distortions, filters, and transformations. Everything remains editable. Next, let's place the shield over Doctor Strange's hand. Press the V key to enable the Move tool, 
and click and drag the design over onto the tab. And when it opens up, just drop it over his hand. Then you can press Control T on Windows, Command T on the Mac to transform and click and drag on the corner handles to scale it in and you can size it appropriately. Then right click and select perspective and just give it a little bit of a perspective. The shield wouldn't be straight on with the camera, so you can adjust it accordingly and reposition it if need be. Commit the changes by tapping in the enter key on Windows, the return key on the Mac. Next, we're going to add the sparks that are gonna go around the shield. For that, I'm gonna use a stock image. You can go into stock.adobe.com from the dropdown, select free and type in the word sparks. And this is the image that I'm going to use. This is the very first one that comes up. As you can see, I've already licensed it. You can download it to your desktop or take it into your Creative Cloud library. I'll work on it from my library. In the Libraries panel, you'll see it here, and I'm going to double click on it to open it. Then go into Filter, Distort, and select Twirl. I'll zoom out so that you can see the result and you can twirl the image if you like. I'm gonna twirl it like so, just to get that moving motion in there. That might be a little much, so I'll scale it back a bit, and I'll press OK, and this is what I'm going to work with. I'll then select the rectangular marquee tool and click and drag while holding the Alt key on Windows, the Option key on the Mac to scale from the center, and I think this will work, and I'll move this over to the right, and I'll press Control c on Windows, Command c on the Mac to copy, I'm going to go into my shield and paste it. Control V on Windows, Command V on the Mac. Then I'll transform. And with the corner handles, I can scale the sparks, reposition them, and distort them any way that I want. This looks good for now. I'll go into the blending mode and I'll select screen. The screen blending mode hides black pixels and keeps the bright ones. In this case, it hides the black background, but keeps the sparks. To increase the intensity of the sparks, you can go into Image, Adjustments, and Select Levels. From here, you can use the Center Gamma Slider to make the sparks brighter and make them more intense. Next, we'll remove the seam from the bottom. Click on the Layer Mask icon to add a mask. Then, enable the Brush Tool and make black your foreground color. When painting in a mask, white reveals and black conceals. So you can just paint over the edges to hide the seam. Then I'll duplicate the layer by pressing Ctrl J on Windows, Command J on the Mac, and I'll transform the layer. Make sure that the reference point is enabled from the options bar and click and drag the reference point to the center of the shield and rotate the sparks to the other side. Keep repeating this process until you get a result that you're happy with. This is my result. I also place the layers into a group called sparks to stay organized. The next step is to create the smoky distortion behind the shield. For that, I'll create a new layer just below the shield layer, and I'll set my foreground color to a dark orange and my background color to a brighter orange, but a bit desaturated. About that color should work. Then I can go into Filter, Render, Clouds. This looks really good. I'll hold Alt on Windows, Option in the Mac, and click on the layer mask icon to create a black mask which will hide everything in the layer. Then with the brush tool and white as my foreground color, I can paint on the mask to reveal the smoke behind the shield. And that looks very good. I'll call this layer smoke again, just to stay organized. And I'll now select the shield layer, go into the FX icon and select outer glow. From this window, set the blend mode to normal and make the color an orange that looks like this and set the saturation to 100, brightness at 100 works, and press OK. You can then increase the opacity to 100% and the size to 50 pixels. Also, you can add an inner glow, change the blending mode to normal, and select an orange that's a little more red than the previous one, set the saturation to 100 and brightness to 100. Also, make sure that the opacity is set all the way to 100%, and I'll set the size to zero. I'll disable the checkbox so that you can see the before and the after. I think everything is looking fantastic and I'll press OK. Next, let's apply a circular blurring effect to create the sensation of motion around the shield. Start by holding Control and click on the sparks, the shield and the smoke to select them all and press Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac to duplicate them. Then put them all in one layer by pressing Control E on Windows, Command E on the Mac to merge. 
Then, with the rectangular marquee tool, hover over the center of the shield, hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and drag out to make a selection. It's okay if you don't select all the sparks, just make sure that you create a selection from the center. Then go into Filter, Blur, and select Radio Blur. Enable the Spin option to create a blur from the center of the selection. And unfortunately, there is no preview, so you will have to experiment with the amount. We'll try 28 for now and press OK. That's a bit too much, so I will undo that. And I'll go into Filter, hold the Alt key on Windows, the Option key in the Mac, and select the first option to bring back the radio blur window. And I'll decrease the amount to about 4. Try again. And that looks very good. I'll change the blending mode to screen and reduce the opacity just a bit. You can also try increasing the contrast to create a more dramatic effect. Go into Image, Adjustment, Levels, and drag the center gamma slider to the right. And press OK. Let's now add a hot glow to the shield to make it more intense. In a new blank layer, you can use the brush tool to paint with white over areas in the shield that you think should be brighter. Then, you can double click to the side of the layer to bring up the layer style window. From the blend mode drop down, select color dodge. Then, uncheck transparency shapes layer. Doing so will make the white strokes over the shield hotter and more intense. You can then use the fill slider to decrease the intensity of the glow. Color dodge is one of the eight blending modes that reacts different when you change fill compared to opacity, and in my opinion, fill gives you a better result. And this design looks great. By the way, if you want to learn more about compositing, make sure to watch my live stream on creating the Star Wars Rogue One movie poster. You can watch it here. My name is Jesus Ramirez. Thank you so much for watching.